I am the co-founder of the Kingfisher Project. And what is that? The Kingfisher Project actually is a project in memory of my daughter, Rebecca Pizal, who in 2014, she was murdered over a drug deal. Um, and she was 20 years old. And after she died, her teacher, who's standing over there, he uh, sent me an essay she had written in high school. And it was about an injured kingfisher bird that everybody else gave up hope on, including me. And he read that at her memorial service. And WJFF radio station, there were a couple people there, and said that would make a good radio show to promote the awareness about the drug epidemic the country has and to reduce the stigma and let people know if they're suffering with addiction or their families that they're not alone. And so we've been on the air since 2015 and then in 2020 when the pandemic came now we're on once a month at WJFF radio station and that's how the Kingfisher Project came about. So why is this important? Um, well for me it was because well it keeps my daughter's memory alive but also it, it kind of helps other people know that they're not alone in this epidemic and if somebody has an addiction problem where to get help and it raises the awareness and keeps people talking about addiction so that their loved ones can get help and also family members because not only are the people who are who are the addicts have you know are suffering so are their family members so we like to raise that awareness and never give up hope we're fortunate to have a magic bullet in our fight against opioid overdoses something that did not exist in the 70s, 80s, or the 90s, Narcan. I was about 13 years old. I was in my parents' house, obviously, and it was dinner time, and dinner time is very important in my family. We all sat down together and talked about the day. I had my mom, my dad, and my four siblings and me, and all seven of us would sit together, except for Tracy when she was absent, owing to her addiction, having been kicked out of the house or otherwise not able to be located by my parents. So this night though, she was there. And she said, do you think I have time before dad comes home to take a shower before we have dinner? My mom was making spaghetti and meatballs. And I said, no one's ever yelled at me for taking a shower before dinner, go take a shower, right? In the meantime, my father came home and there was a big fight in the house. And Tracy was gone and I didn't see her for about a year after that. And uh, until last year, I thought it was because I told her to take a shower and she made dinner late. And that's why my parents were upset and she got kicked out of the house. And I had a talk with her about it and she said, Megan, I was shooting up heroin in the bathroom when you thought I was taking a shower. So I carried around for 25 years the guilt of my sister being kicked out for being late with a shower. So when you're bringing someone back with Narcan, it's fine to be philosophically opposed to it in some situations and things like that, but you would have been bringing back my sister and I wouldn't have had the release that I had last year of 25 years of guilt as a result of that one incident. And what would you say to anybody who's struggling right now? Do you have a message for them? Um, ask for help. Don't be afraid of change. How would you tell somebody who right now, this minute, let's say they watch this an hour from now or two hours from now and they're isolating and they're, they're feeling lost and lonely, what would you tell them? What would be the first thing they can do to help themselves if they really feel like they're done? Go to a meeting or call a program um, because having people around me has been the only reason why I'm standing here.